If you've been around watching my videos for a little while, you'll know I'm generally a fan of these motorized uh, camera stabilizers. I've taken a look at a couple on this channel before as well as shared, you know, some tips and tricks on how to get the most out of them. And if you've been around for a very long time, you'll know that one of my first videos was actually a test of the Ronin M way back in 2015. And that was the first gimbal that I ever tried that had motors on it. Before then, I was using the Glidecam HD 2000 and it was a very capable tool. But today is exciting because Xeon actually sent me their Weeble S, which is a gimbal I've actually had my eye on for a while. So when they sent me an email and said that they want to send a test unit out in exchange for me sharing some thoughts on the gimbal and you know whether I like it or not, I was pretty stoked and of course I said yes. I've been using this thing for a little over three weeks now and I've got to say I really like it so far. The Weeble S is a successor to the Weeble Lab and this basically just adds some extra functionality as well as some more robust motors so that it can handle a slightly heavier payload. So what would I know about stabilizers and gimbals? Well, way back in 2012, I bought my first one, which was not motorized. It was the Glidecam HD 2000. I ignored all of the gimbal noise that was going on. I tried the Ronin M until the Xeon Crane. And when the Xeon Crane came out, I tried it out and I was stoked. I felt like I could finally put away my Glidecam HD 2000 and use a motorized gimbal for all of my camera movement work. And then obviously they brought out the Crane version 2, not the Crane 2, but the version 2, which was the successor to the original Crane and then the Crane Plus. And I owned all three of those gimbals. And since I've owned the Crane Plus, I haven't really seen a need to upgrade, but that is until I heard about the Weeble S. The Weeble S is more catered to your standard mirrorless camera or lighter DSLR cameras. For heavier cameras such as the Canon Cinema line or bigger DSLRs like the 1D, they have their Crane series in the Crane 2 and Crane 3. I use the EOS R which is a mirrorless camera, so this is the perfect setup uh, for this gimbal in terms of weight. I do see a lot of people jumping into the world of videography and thinking that they need to own a stabilizer and use it in almost every single shot in their production in order for their images to look cinematic. In my opinion, overusing camera movement in your videos can cause viewer fatigue, meaning that their eyes never get to settle on a certain point within the frame. To me, a stabilizer is to be used sparingly and with intent. Now, I had never tried the Weeble Lab, so this is my first time trying a Xeon gimbal from the Weeble series. This is not a sponsored video, however, they just asked me to give my honest opinions on it. And as you guys would know, I wouldn't endorse a product that I don't like or use on this channel. So I will be sharing the things that I like about this gimbal, as well as some things that I think Xeon could improve in the future. I think this one really suits my needs because I do travel a lot and it's clear that Xeon did put a lot of effort into making this as compact as possible so that it wasn't super difficult to lug around with you. I always try to keep a small footprint. I appreciate that Xeon put a lot of effort into making this gimbal as compact as possible and I think the design is perfect for what I need it for. So coming from the Crane Plus, one of the biggest improvements for me was the screen. On the Crane Plus, Obviously there is no screen, so you kind of have to remember what mode you're in at any given time. Um, and sometimes you would forget which mode you're in and you just have to reset the gimbal and start again. With the Weeble S, that is a thing of the past because you can quickly glance down to the screen and it will show you which mode you're in. The second big improvement is that you no longer need to use the app to change any of the settings in the gimbal. Everything can be done through the gimbal using the menu. You just press down on the pad and that accesses the menu and you have the dead band, you have um, auto calibration. All the things that you would ordinarily need an app to access and change are all there at your fingertips and I love that. It means that when you're on set, you don't need to muck around with Bluetooth and, and Wi-Fi and connecting things and disconnecting from the, the Wi-Fi you're currently connected to. The menu's fairly straightforward. Uh, it's very easy to use, so I love that. So you can control the gimbal with the joystick on the back and any time that the camera is like sort of off center, you can quickly double click the trigger and then the camera will reset back to normal. So when you're done with the gimbal as well, you can use these locks on the side to lock off each axis of the gimbal, which is really handy when you're traveling. I've been balancing gimbals for a long time now, so I'm pretty used to it. But if you're a beginner, it's really handy to have these locks because it allows you just to focus on one axis at a time. The quick release plate here on the Weeble is a combination of a Manfrotto plate and also an Arca Swiss plate, so it can come apart just like that. 
So if you use Arca Swiss tripods, this is really handy. And if you also use the Manfrotto 501, uh, you've also got that. I use the smaller Manfrotto. I believe this is called the RC2. So I've got that plate adapted on with a screw thread. And that's how I attach the camera. So another thing that I love about this gimbal is the payload. Right now it is handling the EOS R with the 35mm 1.4 from Tamron. And this is not a light lens at all, it's quite heavy. Um, so they've done a really good job with keeping this gimbal compact, but packing some really, really strong motors so that it can really easily handle this kind of weight. I was even able to balance my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K camera, albeit I had to use a counterweight, uh, but when I powered the gimbal on with the Blackmagic, I really wasn't expecting much, but it was able to handle handle the weight, uh, which I was super surprised about. Obviously, I probably wouldn't use that setup because I don't want to have to go through attaching a counterweight every time I have to use it. But it's nice to know that if you've got a heavier camera or a heavier lens on there, that this gimbal can probably handle the weight. I already touched on this briefly, but I really love the modularity of the Weeble S system. You can add an image transmission module to the bottom of the gimbal, which sends a signal to the phone. So even if you have a camera that doesn't have a flip screen, you can have your phone mounted on the side and to the camera in that way. You can also attach a receiver. So instead of using your phone, you can use an external monitor which can be detached from the gimbal. It can be on the other side of the set and you can monitor that way. And they've also got a wireless control kit which allows this gimbal to be operated remotely, which I think is amazing. For a gimbal at this price point and this size, they just really have thought this system out really well. Personally, I have found that the dual pixel autofocus on the EOS R works reliably enough for me that I don't need to mount a follow focus on the gimbal, but Xeon did send me this which is great because if I'm using a manual lens or if I just want uh, more precise control over the focus during a shot, then I can whip this out and attach it to the gimbal. It's super modular and I really like that about the Weeble S. So one of the biggest selling points is obviously the design itself. So it has this extra part uh, that comes out underneath the roll motor and this is where the batteries are stored. It also serves as an attachment point for the handle in underslung mode. So you simply take the little tripod that they give you with the gimbal, you attach it to the battery compartment and then you can quickly move into underslung mode. And it's really quick, really easy. And it's one of the main things that I really like about this gimbal. I took it out and I tested it for a day and I got some really nice smooth footage on a shoot that I did with my friend Lisa. I balanced my EOS R as well as the Sigma 24mm 1.4 on there and it handled the weight perfectly. Honestly, I've never been able to complain about the battery life in any of the Xeon gimbals that I've used and this one is no exception. In my experience, the battery pretty much lasted the entire day. I had it powered on for the most part of the day when I was testing it and the lowest that I ever got in a single day in battery life was down to two bars. In all honesty, there isn't actually much to dislike about the Weeble S. I had a really great time using it. However, there are a few things that I think can be improved, perhaps in the next model. Now, this is not really a negative, it's just something to keep in mind. When you receive the gimbal, make sure you're on the current firmware. Because when I received this one, the roll axis was a little bit off. And also, when I moved into underslung mode and changed to the follow mode, I was only getting tilt control and not pan control. After updating to the current firmware, I no longer had the roll axis problem. And the problem with the underslung mode had been corrected. Okay, first off for the things that I think could be improved. I actually wish that the bottom section of this gimbal was maybe another five to 10 centimeters longer. The reason for that is that you're supposed to have your hand kind of around this area, which means that you kind of have to use this little tripod extension in order to access the joystick and also see what's on the screen. And so you don't bump any of the buttons. Now you can lock these buttons by pressing the LV button twice to lock the ones on the front and three times to lock the buttons on the side as well. However, because your hand is in this area, I can kind of see in some circumstances, maybe you would accidentally double click this button and therefore unlock the control pad and move into a mode that you didn't want to be in. To me, it's also a little bit uncomfortable to hold the top of the tripod mount. I wish they added just a little bit more length to the bottom of the handle. The Weeble S uses these two rechargeable batteries and in order to charge them up, you have to bring this case with you. Now in other gimbals, I've seen a self-contained battery system that has its own USB-C plug. So you basically just plug the battery directly into USB-C power and it'll charge. If Xeon could do that in the future, that would be amazing. And it would mean we would no longer have to bring this battery plate along with us wherever we travel. I think overall Xeon did a really great job with designing this gimbal. I really love it. And I'm looking forward to using it more to film YouTube videos and even some of my paid client work.
They really got that balance right between the size and the motor strength, and it really suits the needs of your modern day mirrorless video shooter. As always guys, if you did have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments section below. Hit that like button if this video helped you out. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.